Welcome to module four, safe use of ladders, ladders and step ladders. Safe use of ladders and step ladders, including assessment, checking, that's checking ladders, pre-use checks, positioning and placing. So ensuring we position and place the ladder in the most suitable and safe position. Securing the ladder, this is all about the stability, ensuring the ladder doesn't slip or fall back. Climbing and descending ladders. Working from a ladder, so you're working from a ladder is included in the safe use of ladders. This is when you're up high, this is when you're at your most uh, hazardous and the possible of falls occur. Carrying ladders, that's included in the safe use, and also storing, ensure they don't get damaged <clears throat> when they're in storage. The guidance we have followed for you is taken from the HSE document IMDG 455, the safe use of ladders and step ladders. I've mentioned in previous modules, have a look at that document. First and foremost, the assessment. Now for safe use, before we start, we should pause and assess the task and the, and the environment. This is to include the ground, the conditions, so ground conditions, any, any overhead hazards, any other work activity that's going on in the area. And this is to confirm that the work can go ahead safely and you have the right ladder. Obviously, that's on the actual day, but pre, prior to this, if the, if the organisation has more than five employees, then there's going to be a written risk assessment as well. So a lot of this forethought would have gone in prior to the actual day you're using the ladder. However, if the day you're using the ladder, when the risk assessment was written, it was sunny, and on the day you're actually using the ladder, it could be raining or it could be frosty, then obviously at the point of activity, the risk has changed. This is why it's very important that before you start the work, you then consider the work environment that you're actually in. From the ground, we're looking for the ground to be firm. We're looking at it for be level and even. So we can use leveling devices, ladder mats as well. And we should not use any bricks, blocks or timbers, etc. So we should only be using recognised proprietary equipment, ancillaries, to assist with stability. Also during our assessment, look up. We should be not be working within six metres horizontally of overhead power lines, unless, of course, they have been made dead or they are protected with insulation. This is vitally important for that risk assessment. And any questions, you go back to the supervisor, go back to the person in charge of the work. In this situation, we're going to be using a non-conductive ladder, example, fiberglass or timber. Very important. We should also be aware of any domestic supply cables, as can be seen here in both photographs. Moving on from the assessment of the area, checking. This for me is absolutely vital. So we should make sure the ladder is in a safe condition before you start. More on pre-use checks and inspections later, but the pre-use and inspection checks, the pre-use checks, they are absolute lifesavers. If the ladder is damaged at all, then we need to be reporting any defects and simply not using the ladder. Moving on now to position and placement. The photograph you can see there is taken from INDG 455, but the actual <clears throat> the stability um, ancillaries that would be on this picture, they've actually been admitted. When HSC done this photograph, it says in the guidance, they have been admitted for clarity. Onto the angle, we can see it in the photograph there. So the safe angle at which we should be positioning a leaning ladder is 75 degrees. This can be achieved by ensuring a 1.4 ratio, a one to four ratio. This is one meter out for every four meter up. So that's one meter from the base of the ladder out from in this, in this instance, the wall for every four metres 
up high. To assist us with that, we angle spirit levels are available. We can see from the photograph there that for this task, they're using standoffs. And this is to avoid resting the ladder on weak surfaces, such as guttering, because the guttering could give way. Securing the ladder, as can be seen from the photographs, tie the ladder to a suitable point. Make sure both styles are tied. We can see there that both styles are attached to the wall. Where this is not practical, secure an, uh, with an effective ladder stability device. And again, if this is not possible, then securely wedge the ladder against ladder styles against a wall. And if you can't achieve any of these, then you can foot the ladder as a last resort. Ensure any rung hooks you are using are secured. So quite often people use rung hooks to hang equipment or materials on. Make sure they are secured because if they come away from the ladder, then you have a falling object. Obviously underneath that ladder, that area itself should be made sterile. So we do not want a ladder being put above a door entrance, above a doorway. We need to make sure that that area is safe in itself and that people can't reverse vehicles in there. But again, this is all important in the pre-task risk assessment, but obviously the dynamic risk assessment that we're undertaking while doing the operation. Any locking mechanisms that are on the, the ladder themselves, they should be fully deployed and locked into place. And any anchors and restraint systems are fully tensioned. Again, ensuring the stability and security of the ladder. Any rope systems that you're using for any proprietary systems, they are properly tied off. Any safety devices are fitted securely. And also, any unauthorized use must be prevented. So you can see the run guards on the side there. There's a number of cases whereby children have got onto ladders, they've got up high and they've fallen off injuring themselves. Climbing and descending. At some point, we're going to have to go up and we're going to have to come down. So we should always grip the ladder and face the ladder rungs while climbing or descending. That is, our body are facing, our body is facing, our face is facing the ladder. We don't wish and we shouldn't come down the ladder backwards. I've seen it happen. We shouldn't be doing it. Carrying. If we're carrying the ladder, if it's unavoidable, carry only light materials and tools. Sorry, if we're carrying, that is, items up the ladder, ensure that they only are, they only are light materials and tools. We should maintain three points of contact when climbing. This means a hand and two feet. Footwear, very important. Make sure your footwear and the runs are free from mud and anything that could cause you to slip. Again, important, many people fall off ladders due to incorrect or incorrect footwear or muddy, dirty, slippery footwear due to materials that are actually on the feet or on your boots. Working from a ladder. Ultimately, we're using a ladder to carry out some work. So we're going to be working from the ladder. Don't try to move or extend ladders while standing on the rungs. Do not walk or bounce ladders. Climb down and move it. You do see people doing this. You see them on the ladder. They're only midway up and then they're shuffling themselves to move the ladder down the building. It's not advised. Don't work off the top three rungs and make sure the ladder extends at least one metre, three rungs, above where you are working. It's especially important if you're leaving the ladder to gain access to a platform. So we shouldn't be working from the top three rungs. Remember that and remember that the ladder should extend at least one metre meter above so that's we that means we're going up past the platform wherever we exit in and we can exit safely we're not having to climb onto anything we should never exceed the load rating mentioned earlier on in en 131 
of 150 kilograms, which includes anything being carried and obviously the individual themselves. Maintain three points of contact, which we've mentioned. So when we're working from a ladder, a ladder, do not overreach. So if we're on a ladder and we have to overreach, come down and move the ladder. We should keep our belt buckles within the width of the ladder. This is between the styles. We should always consider the use of a tool belt to avoid dropping tools. If we can harness them onto ourselves or lanyard, lanyard them onto ourselves, that is good. But remember, we must have a sanitized area underneath the, the task location. And we should not transfer from one ladder to another or try to move the ladder from above. So in the photograph there, we can see on the left-hand side with the tick, three points of contact and within the styles, a belt buckle. And on the right-hand side, we don't have three points of contact. We're overreaching and our belt buckle is not inside the styles. That is from INDG 455. Using a step ladder. We should ensure that the spreader bars, the locking mechanisms are fully engaged and all four feet are placed evenly on a solid surface. So that is the spreader bars that are inside of the actual ladder rails. We should avoid working side on if possible. Where this is necessary, example space doesn't allow the ladder to be locked when fully facing the wall. We should avoid work that imposes is side loading, such as drilling into brick or concrete. Tying the ladder may be necessary. So we don't want that ladder to be side on because it's gonna fall backwards. It's got nothing to, to stop it going backwards. We should never work on a closed step ladder. So again, we have to splay the step ladder fully, ensure any locking mechanisms are fully locked out should never stand on the back of a ladder. So we obviously have the steps that are go up one side and on the other side, you're gonna have some supporting bars. We should not be standing on the supporting bars. We never work on the top three steps. If we have to, because of the work location, then we've got to revisit the risk assessment and either not use a ladder or use a more suitable ladder for the height. And as the individual is doing in this photograph, that's not one of PCR Global, I hasten to add, never stand on the top of a step, on a, of a step ladder. You are not stable. So in the photograph here, we can see maintaining three points of contact. He's got both feet. And as you can see, his legs or his thighs are providing that additional stability. So when both hands need to be free for brief periods, two feet and a part of the body supported by the ladder is permissible. A safe handhold should be available if you're doing that or if you need to reach. Carrying a step ladder, safe use. There are various ways to carry ladders. The important things to note are, we should make sure the area around us and the route is clear of any trip hazards. So walk the route first. Remember that risk assessment, that written risk assessment provided by the site manager or your employer, that risk assessment does not cater for the materials or the tools or other trades that are in that area. So this is up to us to do that dynamic risk assessment at that time. So walk the route to make sure it's clear. When lifting the ladder from the floor, we should bend our knees and grasp the ladder firmly. So we're doing correct manual handling techniques. If we're using a particularly long and heavy ladder, we could place the foot of the ladder against the wall and raise it, walking it up overhand from below. So the ladder doesn't slide when we're doing that. Or we could have someone else put the ladder to assist us with lifting it. Remember again, we're carrying the ladder, we are looking up. If lifting a ladder to move it or raising from the ground and into position, we should look up. Check everywhere around. In the military, we used to call it a five and 20 meter checks. So we are checking for anything else hazardous within the certain work area. If carrying on our shoulders, 
we should make sure we can see clearly ahead of us. So we're not carrying the ladder, not looking where we're going, and then we end up hitting somebody else with the ladder. When we're approaching corners, we should try to step out wide if possible to gain a better line of sight. And again, that is to avoid someone else walking into the ladder. There's also carrying aids. So carrying aids are available. We can see a carrying aid in the, in the photograph on the left. But always a two person carry is going to be the safer option, remembering to communicate with each other. So even for carrying the ladders, training, we need to be trained in the use of carrying ladders. Storing and maintaining ladders. So when storing or transporting ladders, transporting ladders, we should not place anything on top of them because that could damage the ladder itself, but also things can slide off. We need to keep our ladders free from paint, free from any corrosives, any cement or any substances that could affect the ladder's integrity or could also cover any defects. So think about this with paint. If there's paint over the defect in the ladder, we're not going to be not going to be see it. And then ultimately, then the ladder could fail. We shouldn't use any oils or lubricants on telescopic ladders unless recommended by the manufacturer. As mentioned in the previous model, the manufacturer's instructions, the manufacturer's guidance. This is our first port of call to understand how to use that specific type of ladder correctly. When carried on vehicles, ensure they are secured. We do not want ladders falling off vehicles, of course. We should not leave ladders on the ground where they could be damaged by vehicles or plant, or indeed tripped over. And any ladders that have failed our inspection must be secured to prevent any further use or disposed of. There are times where we can actually maintain ladders so we can fix ladders appropriately again we have to be competent. We have to be using proper ladder parts so that if the ladder has failed, it's one of our detailed visual inspections, which we'll talk more about in the next section, next module. But also if it's failed, our pre-use inspection before we use the ladder. So now we're coming up to the end of module four. The key message from this module is that ladders can be a suitable option if they're used correctly. And for the key points, take note of these, especially the yellow areas, because they may appear in the questions. Make sure that we assess the work area for hazards. That's what our risk assessment. It's going to be a dynamic risk assessment as well on the day. We should be using the correct accessories for the task and not any other ad hoc solution that we've devised ourselves. We should be checking ladders before use. This is our pre-use checks and we should be reporting any defects and definitely not using damaged ladders. The positioning of ladders we looked at. So when positioning a leaning ladder up against the wall, the correct angle is 75 degrees. That gives us a four in one ratio. That is four up and one out. We should avoid placing our ladders on weak or fragile surfaces. Example, guttering, and we're using those standoffs. When ladders are, ladders must be secured, but a stability advice is the next choice used if this is not possible. If you cannot use a device, you can wedge the foot of the ladder, example, against the wall. And the last resort is to have somebody foot the ladder. When climbing, lad climbing ladders, we keep our hands free. When we keep hands free when climbing or descending the ladder and if carrying, the load must be light when we are up the ladder. Footwear and rungs must be free of anything that could cause a slip. And when working from a ladder, we should keep our belt buckle, buckle between the styles of the ladder and we should not be overreaching. Don't ever work from the last three rungs. The top of the ladder should project one meter above any landing, unless there are additional handholds that have been that I wouldn't say so much in the area, additional area, additional items put in, but if the given workspace does has that, providing it's been accounted for in the risk assessment.
When working from a leaning ladder, three points of contact must be maintained. If using a step ladder, two hands can be free for short periods if another part of the body is supported by the ladder itself. We should avoid working side on, particularly if the task imposes side loading. This means we can push the ladder out. We have there, we should avoid, we could actually push it outwards and we lose that stability. Never stand on the top of a step ladder. And finally, do not move ladders while standing on them. Ladders are a useful piece of equipment if we can't use another method. We must do the risk assessment. We must use the ladders correctly, and that's with any ancillary devices. So without further ado, good luck with the questions.